good evening. Um, we canceled Christmas Day service, so I'll be doing a short service. What I was going to do tomorrow, except for um, no communion. So we'll do it from home, and then you can watch it either tonight before you go to bed or tomorrow morning after you get up, um, however you want to do it. The angel said to the shepherds, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. As we gather, we hear again the good news the angels proclaim. God has come for all people through the birth of the one named Jesus. Through Bethlehem's ma manger, God comes into the chaos, messiness, and vulnerability of the world. In all things and at all times, we rejoice that God comes to save us and reigns in love. We come to adore Jesus, who is Savior, Christ, and Lord. We'll now have confession and forgiveness. Amid the troubles and fears of this world, let us confess our sin and welcome God's forgiveness, grace, and love. Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive our lack of faith and trust. Your son was born in the poverty of a stable. Forgive our neglect of the poor. The shepherds left their flocks and went to Bethlehem. Forgive our selfishness and complacency. With great joy, the angels proclaimed, do not fear, for I bring you good news of great joy. Today is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. In Jesus, who is Savior, Christ, and Lord, our sins are forgiven. May you know the peace which the angels sang from the heavens. Indeed, God's forgiveness is good news of great joy. Amen. Our first scripture reading for Christmas is from Isaiah, the ninth chapter. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. I found um, this reflection online as I was kind of thinking about what to do for our Christmas service. And so the reflection says, at long last, our Advent hopes are fulfilled. Christ Christmas has arrived. God's promise for a savior to rule with peace and justice has come in the form of a newborn baby, Jesus. The vast mystery of God is suddenly embodied in an, an infant named Jesus, crying out into the world, just as each one of us did at our birth. We call this event, God being born as a human, the incarnation, meaning God in the flesh. Although the word incarnation looks and sounds similar to the word incarceration, the two could not be more opposite. Incarceration refers to imprisonment, solitude, and confinement. It is about separating the person from the world. Incarnation is God becoming human to walk with us on our earthly journey, to save us, and to set us free. The best news of this Christmas miracle is that God continues to come into our hearts and meet us wherever we are. Prison walls can't keep God out. In fact, the Bible says that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so uh, they provided a quote to think about. It says, a quote to ponder. Christmas did not come after a great mass of people had 
completed something good or because of the successful result of any human effort. No, it came as a miracle, as the child that comes when his time is fulfilled, as a gift. And that's by Eber Eber Eberhart Arnold. And then as I was uh, thinking about that, they also provided a question to, to think about too. What does the fulfillment of God's promise mean to you? How does that change things for you? So now we have um, a couple verses of Go Tell It on the Mountain. So I'll go ahead and sing that. You can join along singing with me at home. Go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born while shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night behold throughout the heavens there shone a holy light Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. And here's a prayer as we reflect on what Christ has done for us. So let's pray. Oh God, I don't know where to start. Come make a stable in my heart. In times of darkness, pain, and fear, Lord, meet me here. Lord, meet me here. Our second scripture reading for this Christmas is Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered, and Joseph also went from the town of Naz Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. And here's the, the next section of the reflection that I found. Our flawed human nature means that the word promise too often means disappointment. Around us and in our own lives, promises have not been kept. Promises of presence, presence, love, money, materials, time, all broken and replaced with anger, grief, and confusion. These moments of discord occur on many levels. Promises between friends, vows among loved ones, agreements made by governments. It is easy to get caught up in the disappointment, overwhelmed by feelings of anger or distrust, or guilt and self-hatred. God, where are you? We cry out joining the cries of centuries of people yearning for a relationship that is whole and holy. Whom can we trust? The Christmas story is the fulfillment of a promise 
God says, I will be with you. Through the birth of Jesus, God comes to earth, bringing light and life to all people. The setting God chooses for this story is striking. Jesus is not born into wealth and power. Instead, he is born to a young couple, Mary and Joseph, in a stable for animals. Into this poverty, a savior is born. This is not just the birth of a baby. It is the birth of peace, the birth of hope. It is the birth of grace, God's unconditional love for all people, God's love for you. And so this author, um, she goes in and is a, a director at a women's prison choir. And so she said, for the past three years, I have directed a woman's prison choir called The Voices of Hope. For the first Christmas, I wanted to give everyone a gift, but prison rules prohibited bringing anything in. So instead, I wrote them a song. And here are some of the lyrics of the song that she wrote. When you've said your goodbyes to the one that you love, and you're feeling alone and it's not enough, when you're stuck in your head and you lose control of the battle of worth in your mind and your soul, sing a new song, sing a song of peace. For the song that you sing will set you free. Sing, sing a new song of hope. It will be with you always, wherever you go. God is the song in our hearts. We are often too busy or too loud or too anxious to hear it. But God continues to sing a new song in our lives. God is always with us. And this promise of presence is the best present of all. Then another quote to ponder, this one from Frederick um, Buckner. If holiness and the awful power and majesty of God were present in this least auspicious of all events, this birth of a peasant's child, then there is no place or time so lowly and earthbound, but that holiness can be present there too. And so a question to reflect on is, how might you be standing in your own way of receiving God's grace in the form of Jesus Christ? Let's pray. Sustaining God, you have promised to be with us in times of joy and sorrow, yet we confess that we do not always trust in your presence. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to live among us, to heal and to comfort us, and to preach a radical word of love and grace to the world. May we carry this song in our heart as a reminder of your steadfast promise. And may your loving faithfulness be reflected in our own thoughts and actions towards ourselves and one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And then they have, um, they suggest joy to the world. So we'll sing a verse from that. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. All right. Um, and now, as we are finishing up this service, um, I wanted to just say I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas, that you stay warm, um, and that you enjoy God's love and grace present with us through, through the birth of Jesus that we're celebrating. Um, and I just hope you have a great time with your family and, and friends or um, just remembering past Christmases. However you celebrate, I hope it's wonderful. And then I will have our blessing. God bless you and keep you. Jesus grant you grace and truth. And the Spirit send peace upon your hearts now and forever. Amen. All right. Have a Merry Christmas. Good night, everyone.